So Ian, the last time we came down to you at Speedycom, you worked on a comfort package for the bike, but you've had the bike for a while now, and you've been working on some performance parts, haven't you? Yes, we initially started with the MWR air filter. An extremely well proven air filter. It's actually won in the World Championships. Yeah, Tom Sykes actually won in the World Superbikes, and in the British Championships we have Alex Lowe's, amongst other championships that have been won by that particular filter. So that's not a bad product for me, old Muggins here, to have in his little track bike, but it's got a bit of a unique feature, isn't it? With like a little, it looks like almost a spoiler on it. Yes, what, what the actual filter has is a deflector plate. That deflector plate not only works as a baffle plate to, to get for the DB level of the machine on, on an open circuit, but also deflects the air so that the airflow works with the fuel with the injector rather than a standard filter which where the air airflow will actually blow the fuel away between the injector and the bell mouth so you'll consequently gain more power through that air filter. Okay, so that's increased power through the air filter, but what about the exhaust? You've made a change there as well, haven't you? Yes, well, we actually removed the exhaust you came with the machine originally, and then we fitted an exit exhaust. The ex exit exhaust is a company that's been manufacturing exhaust since '96, and it's relatively new to the UK. The exhaust itself is actually a high-flow exhaust, a race exhaust. Also, when you weighed in the, sh in the showroom, when we weighed it, and we did the work, you found that this exhaust also gives you a weight advantage. In addition, we've actually removed the ser servo motor. The servo motor weighed um, a fair old amount of weight when we weighed it initially, and then we've replaced it with what we call the servo body. The reason for that is that the fault light would appear on your dashboard, and the dashboard then would send a signal to the ECU, which could potentially put your bike into a default mode. By putting the servo body in, you've actually removed, you've removed the weight, you've removed the cables from the machine, and really it just works purely as a noise suppression valve on your bike. So all these bits are making it go faster. What about stopping? Oh, stopping obviously a vital part of being on a track day. Now, the machine you brought in was an 08 bike. That makes the brake lines five years old. Now, over a period of time, rubber perishes and the efficiency of the brakes will very much diminish. You have radial calipers and radial master cylinder but you had a bit of a weak point between the two. So as a result, we fitted you a set of hell brake lines. We fitted them in a race setup to give you direct feed from the master cylinder down to your brake lines. That will give you the best possible braking within the equipment that you have. And they're luminous orange, which I like. Oh yes, luminous orange, suited your bike. Now one other thing you uh, fitted that's very small but will help us a lot in the pit lane was the captive spacers, weren't they? Yes, the captive spacers are a unique little gadget which will save you so much time in the paddock and frustration come to that. When you're actually changing wheels, the captive spacers have a little small rim which allows the uh, space to be held in by the rubber seal on each of the wheel bearings. So when you're changing your wheels, there's not, a, not quite as much of a problem, shall we say, yeah. when actually holding the spacers in position to allow you to put the spindle through. Now Ian, that's not all. You actually had a little play and changed the ECU system, didn't you? Yes, once we've actually put the filter, the filter uh, in and the exhaust, you've got air coming in a lot quicker in a lot more efficient manner, and you've got the exhaust gases coming out a lot quicker as well. So in between that, you have to create your fueling. From a fueling point of view, we fitted one of the Bazaz units, which was supplied to us with JTEC Sports. We fitted it, it was a standard unit, and then obviously went to the dyno. The guys at FBM at the dyno, we actually initially ran it. The standard setting was 109 brake. Once we'd worked from there with just the equipment we put on, it went to about 11 and a half. At 111 and a half, we then started the dyno work, which with the Bazaars brought us to 116.5. And for the year of the bike and for the uh, condition and what we've done with it is a very good figure.